Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, My PhD Life. I hope you are enjoying the content and have subscribed to my channel. If you haven't yet, press the red subscribe button below. Hit the notification bell icon so that you never miss an update. And I hope you are also enjoying episodes of the Science Chat Show, finding your favorite scientific personalities. Today's video is going to be about an important crucial question that a PhD, every PhD student faces in their lives and that's how to choose your PhD project or your PhD mentor. Hey, what are you up to? I have been going through so many papers from the labs of professors that I'm interested to work in and trying to figure out which professor would be the best match for me. I think I've found few but it's just so confusing and such a long process. <laughs> Get me in touch with the senior of yours that you were saying who studies at XYZ. Yeah, I've been thinking about which professor to join and I think I should talk to someone who's there. That would be a great help. Thanks. Yeah. Hi, Manal. This is Navjot. Uh, Nikki gave me your contact number. Yeah, yeah. I'm joining uh, ABC for my PhD program. Yeah. So I wanted to know about Professor XYZ and Professor MNQ. I'm really interested in the kind of work that they do, but I am just so confused as to whom should I join. It's just 10 minutes left for me to submit my admission form in which I have to give preference whether the Department of Chemical Engineering is my first preference or nanotechnology or biotechnology as these were the three that I filled in the preliminary form. And I'm so confused whether nano should be my first preference or the chemical engineering department. Yes, there are all kinds of students in this world and I just showed you illustrations for a few. So except for those zen-like super clear students who know from their childhood or early days of higher education about what they want to do, all of us need guidance and help to decide and take these uh, crucial decisions. So in today's video, I'll share my tips on making these life-changing decisions as I like to call them. And we'll talk about how one can go about making this choice and selecting their PIs, uh, which is the principal investigator, which is the PhD lingo for your PhD mentor or supervisor per se. I often like to make these analogies between food and PIs, the principal investigators or PhD mentors, because as food is an important pillar to help you go through tireless and hardworking days and nights of PhDs, your PI is an equally important pillar to make sure that your PhD is on track. Like all of us uh, like eating a few cuisines and for others we might feel that they are too bland or too spicy, match, a good match with your PI is also very important to make sure that you are as productive as you can be to say the least. Especially for foodies, like good or bad food can make or break their days. A PhD mentor can make or break your PhD, so it's very important to choose the right person, choose the right projects and make these decisions very carefully. As today, we have many online apps to order food or you can just go to a restaurant, order some food and if you don't like it, the next time you can change it and go to some other place or order something different. Changing your PI is not that easy and again, that's another factor that makes it very important to be very clear of your choice whenever you make one. So now, let's talk about my top 5 tips that I think every PhD student should consider before they make this crucial decision. I think the research proposal is one of the two most important factors to be considered when making this decision. If you don't feel passionate enough and motivated to work in the field or the project that you've chosen, it's going to be very difficult to survive the next three to five years of your PhD. A PhD is going to be full of multiple failed experiments, simulations, ideas, and your expectations are going to be shut to the ground on many days. 
and you need to be motivated attached and passionate about the problem that you're solving to continue so considering the proposal carefully and measuring your inclinations and interests in the field and on the project are very very important According to me and all my peers without exception, as important it is to learn about the proposal, it's equally important to learn about the temperament and working style of your PI. You have to work for years in collaboration with the person and it's important to understand that their working styles and temperaments and expectations match yours. If you're a person who needs regular checks, maybe on daily or weekly basis, then you need to find a PI like that. And if you're a person who wants to be more independent and figure out their own paths and ways, then you need to find a person who gives you those liberties. As I said, PhD is going to be full of failed experiments, failed simulations, failed ideas, and it's only, it's only going to be a few ideas of the hundreds of ideas that you come up with that are going to work. And to support you through all these failures and help you show the right path during the times when things are not working, it's important that you can have conversations and long meetings with your PI. That means you need to find a PI who has time on his or her plate. And sometimes uh, you find someone who's a top shot in their field and have a lot of good name and contacts and you're eager to join them. But that might also come with the fact that they might be busy with so many meetings and responsibilities that they might not have enough time for you. And that might be untrue also. So they're all styles of mentoring that PIs observe. Hence, it's important to talk to seniors in those labs, existing students, and see how busy the PI is and how much time do they devote, especially in the early years of your PhD. Once you have learned the skills and you know you can be on your own, then it's okay. But in the initial few months or year, a year or year and a half, you need support and you should make sure that your guide has the time to help you during those times. Another intelligent point that I think PhD students should consider is what is the status of funding available in the professor's lab that they're thinking to join, especially if you're an experimentalist, because sometimes there are these unfortunate conditions where the lab might be going through some fund scarcity, and due to that funding crunch, the student might not be able to pursue what experiments that they want to do for their research, and hence delaying progress in their work. Another quality that I think that PhD students should consider is the quality of existing students in the group that they're considering to join. Motivated, humble, intelligent, hardworking people would motivate you to give it your best shot. While if you have a group where people don't talk much, they don't discuss their problems, then after a period of time, you would also become reluctant and sort of get stuck in this quagmire where you need help, but you can't find people who can help you. Helping seniors are one of the best best support system that PhD students can find so that even if their PI is busy, the seniors in the lab can help you to figure out your ways. While there could be some small factors that could be added to this list, but I think these are my top five to be considered while making this decision. The ocean of research is too deep and a huge stretch and most of it you have to swim on your own. So make sure that you choose the right boat which saves you when you're about to drown. I hope you enjoyed the video, you're enjoying the content on the channel. Like, share and subscribe my videos and I'll see you soon. Take care, bye bye.